Hi, my name is Ron Bertino. I'm a Microsoft Consulting Practice Lead specializing in Active Directory and Exchange. I've also done a lot of security work in the past, so and that's actually going to be the focus of our talk today. Now these days, most companies allow their internal employees to have access through to internal websites, be it an intranet, an extranet, or something like that, or even something like Outlook Web Access, where really it's just access to email, but it's hosted on an internal website. Now the problem is that most uh, companies don't really understand how to protect these systems from frontal attack. And they don't realize how susceptible they are to attack. And uh, we can easily fix that for them and give them a hand. So, but first of all, before we talk about the solution, let's actually get to understand the problem. So let's draw this thing out. Now the first thing is that we'll, we'll start off just drawing a bubble here for the internet. Um, most companies, of course, will have a firewall. Now from the firewall, we'll have an internal segment and uh, the customer may have an internal web server of some sort or this again could be something like an Exchange uh, 2010 Outlook Web Access system um, the specific role that would sit on here is something called a client access server now another thing that companies typically have is they have a demilitarized zone and within this demilitarized zone it's quite common to set up what's called a bastion host which in other words is another viable location for a website of some sort. And this is a very common practice. At least it used to be a common practice. These days it no longer is the best practice. But again, let's let's get to that in a second, all right? So first of all, let's talk about how access currently happens right now. Now, the internet is going to try and get access through to one of these systems. So let's look at specifically what's going to happen. Now, the first thing that can happen is that we may access this uh, server in the DMZ, the website. So in order to access this particular system, what's going to happen is, as you can see here, is that the internet user is going to come through the firewall and the firewall is going to proxy or relay that request back through to the DMZ website. Now, there's when I say proxy, that needs to be qualified because most of the time it's actually not a proxy, most of the time it's simply something called a network address translation, which really means that the firewall just passes that traffic through to the website and really does nothing with it. Uh, short of looking at the source IP, destination IP, and port. Typically, in this case, is going to be port 80 if we're talking HTTP. Okay. Now, the other scenario here is that it may be exactly the same thing, but now leading through to the internal website. So again, we've got the content that's coming through the firewall on port 80, leading through the internal website, either in the DMZ or on the internal segment. Okay. Now, in the case that it's something like an Exchange 2010 system, not only is it best practice, but it is the only supported fashion such that the client access server role, which is really a website, if you want to call it that, is going to live on the internal segment. It's not supported to have any of the exchange roles in terms of for the, the client access service anyway, sitting in the DMZ. Okay. So now that we've had a look at this, this is really not a secure environment. So uh, what happens now is that anybody out on the internet can do a frontal assault against any one of these two websites. So if any of these websites have any unpatched holes on them, then these holes are susceptible to being attacked and then they can be compromised and then you can expand the attack now from the inside. Because once you've compromised one of these two systems, you're effectively on the inside and um, attacking a system from the inside is actually very straightforward. So how do we protect this? Well, what happened a long time ago, as in you know years ago, is that people put the focus here on the actual firewall. So what happened was that um, firewalls got more expensive, and they went from being what were called layer three firewalls, which really look at nothing more than source IP, destination IP, and port, through to what's called an application layer firewall, which means that they don't just look at those three things that I've just mentioned, but they actually look inside the content of the, the stream, if you like, and they say, is this valid HTTP traffic? All right. A way to think about it is that it's the equivalent of looking up a dictionary that has a protocol definition of exactly uh, how the HTTP protocol should actually work. And if it doesn't match, if it's something fishy, whereas an attacker is trying to do something strange, it would then drop that particular packet, which is a good thing. So people put money in through to the firewall and again went from a layer 3 firewall through to a layer 7 firewall and now had application layer inspection. Well this is all well and good but things evolved and what happened was that um, people realized that doing the HTTP protocol is really not a secure fashion uh, or at least not a secure way to allow access because it is unencrypted. 
So if you were logging on through this website, when you pass a username and your password, then anybody can actually tap that stream and just look at your the content of that stream and basically grab the username and password, and that's not a good thing. So uh, people, when they allowed this type of access, they said, you know what, we shouldn't really allow HTTP access. We should change this through to HTTPS, which is port 443. And it, on when you look at this initially, it actually sounds good. You might say, yeah, it, it's a good thing to go from an unencrypted channel through to an encrypted channel. But here's the catch, okay? Now, this is a good thing because when the user actually logs on through to this internal website or the, the website in the DMZ, now really what's happening, if it's HTTPS, it's now a virtual circuit going from wherever the user is connected. So let's throw the user out here. From this source all the way through to this DMZ website. The, web, the website itself is the endpoint. So therefore, it, the, the stream, if you like, becomes unencrypted on the actual web server. And that's a good thing in order to protect the credentials of logging on and passwords and so forth. Okay? But the problem is that if you have a look at this particular path, what's happening now is that this path, let me just redraw it over here in black, this path is now going through the firewall. Well, remember how we put money in through to this firewall because we wanted an application layer firewall and we now spent $50,000 or whatever it was on that firewall in order to make it more intelligent, right? Well, the second that we do HTTPS, this is an encrypted stream. So guess what? The firewall can't see that traffic either. And that's not a good thing because all of that money that we put into the firewall for application layer inspection is now pretty much useless, okay? It can inspect HTTP, which is the unencrypted version, but it cannot see inside the encrypted channel. And that's the catch-22, because the second that we allow HTTPS connections through to either DMZ servers or internal servers, the second that we do that now, the, our expensive $50,000 firewall becomes almost like a cheap router, and it does very, very, very basic level inspection, effectively layer 3 inspection. And that's not a good scenario either. So how do we do it? We want to provide HTTPS, but we also want to have application layer inspection. Okay, so and and that really is 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 the main issue of what we need to do to protect it. So let's have a look at how we do that. Well, one of the easiest ways to do it is to install an additional layer of security in here. We don't have to replace any of these systems. All we're doing is that we drop a threat management gateway box in the DMZ, and this box also drops down through to the internal segment as well, so that we can join this guy up through to Active Directory and get much tighter levels of security than we could if we just had a single leg into the DMZ and nothing else. Okay, now, if we now look at the access now, now what's going to happen is that over here, this uh, uh, website in the DMZ is going to have the SSL certificates on there, and so what we do is that we grab these certificates and we actually install the certificates on the threat management gateway as well. So now what we're going to do is that we have TMG pretend to be this particular website that we want to protect. And here's the, the interesting thing that happens because now if we have a user out on the internet, they're still going to come through the firewall using HTTPS. They're still going to hit TMG, but TMG again is pretending to be that particular website. So since it's pretending to be the endpoint, it can now unencrypt that traffic and TMG is a full-blown firewall, it's actually a very good firewall and uh, therefore it has very strong application layer inspection. All right? Now notice that the front-end firewall that we talked about before, this guy up here, it cannot see inside that stream because it's encrypted. Right? Uh, it's still a good thing to have in place though because it can protect from a whole variety of other attacks but the second that we're doing HTTPS it can't see inside that but TMG, since TMG is now acting as the endpoint effectively, it can unencrypt that traffic. Now, the second that it's unencrypted that traffic, because it's the endpoint, it can now run the advanced application layer inspection. And once it's verified that it's actually correct traffic, it can then pass on the request through to the relevant website, be it a DMZ website or an internal website. Okay? So now by having TMG in place, it's a great level of protection because really what we're doing is that even if we were to have, you know, 10 unpatched holes on this particular internal system, we no longer care because it's no longer able to be frontal assaulted by somebody from the internet. Okay? Because what's going to happen is that they're remember they're going to be coming through the outer firewall, 
they're going to hit TMG, TMG will pretend to be that website, it will now unencrypt that traffic, it will then look inside that stream and therefore see if you're trying to do anything strange, like trying to hack the site, it will now drop that content and not pass on that request through the internal website. So the benefit of having TMG there, again, is, is twofold in this particular case. Okay, One is that it acts as an endpoint, and uh, secondly, it has very strong application layer inspection. Now what this does is that it enables you to have protection of any internal website, be it DMZ or internal, and by the way, it of course can protect your Exchange environment as well for Outlook Web Access. And really, it's just a simple way of, of uh, adding an additional layer of security and uh, protecting all of the internal websites. And it actually doesn't matter what the website is running. It can be running Apache. It can be running any version of website of your choice. It doesn't have to be the Microsoft one. And it will protect all of them. Okay. Um, so that really is the, a quick run through of what TMG can do. It can actually do a, a lot more functionality, but these are the two features that make it a very easy additional layer of security for pretty much every single client that's out there. All right. Thank you.